All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been forever since I posted a video, but we have been filming and I'm happy to report that we finally finished the van build and we've actually been on the road for the past three months. Full time, we drove it out west. We drove like over 11,000 miles and saw like 17 different states. Now that we've had a little bit of time to actually live in it and use it, I wanna give you guys a tour and show you guys the setup because it's really pretty simple. The whole van build with the cost of the van and the build cost us only 13 grand. You can definitely go a lot fancier and you could probably do it for a lot cheaper too, but this is what's worked for us. And honestly, it's been a dream come true. The past three and a half months has been incredible. And this van build has completely exceeded my expectations. And it just goes to show you that you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a hundred thousand dollar sprinter, which is kind of what we thought when we first got into you know, wanting to get a van. I could not be more proud of Andrew and what he did with this build. He's not on camera because he doesn't love being on camera all the time, but just know that he worked his butt off for the past three weeks before we got on the trip. He literally was busting his butt in the winter and we left in the beginning of March and he was doing stuff up until the last day. We did record some of the van build, but we literally left for the West Coast the day after we finished the van build and we're gone for almost three months. And I have been editing all of the photos and content from that trip. So I haven't even touched the van build videos, but maybe one day soon those will go up. I also created a blog post to go along with this video that is going to list all of the items that I mentioned in this video. So if you're interested in any of those, you can check the link in the description for that. And yeah, so I guess we'll just get right into it. The van is a 2006 Ford Econoline E150 passenger van, as you can see with the windows. We bought it with 120,000 miles on it, and I think it has almost 145,000 miles now that we've driven it across the country but knock on wood it has been super reliable we did have to replace our alternator while we were on the road um, and a spark plug and a few minor things but less than three hundred dollars in repairs the entire trip and i am so thankful i can say that now that we're back all right so now we can start with the exterior of the van and i guess i'll open so this is the awning. I guess we'll start here. It's an awning by Danchel Outdoors. It's pretty small, but we don't really need anything super big. We don't want a big footprint. It's pretty inexpensive. We're in a really shady spot right now, but when we aren't, it's super nice to be able to have shade and a little bit of cover. This isn't a good view right now, but we also have a roof rack that Andrew got on Facebook Marketplace. It was all rusted out and gross, and he sanded it all down and painted it black. And then we recently got a rooftop cargo storage, which we did not have on our big trip out west. And I'm so sad that we didn't do it before because it has been such a game changer. I know it doesn't look very big, but it's huge. And we can actually fit two inflatable paddle boards and a bunch of our camping gear and just a bunch of stuff we don't want to have just sitting around in the van. All right, so in terms of the exterior, I'm trying to think of what else. The bug screen. This bug screen we did not have on our trip out west and I so wish that we did. It's a very simple thing, but now it allows us to keep both of our doors open without getting any bugs in. And I know this part's not pretty. It didn't fit and we had to modify it. Shout out to Andrew's mom and my grandpa for helping us with that. But it's a very simple concept. It allows us to go in and out of the van and it just claps back together like that. And yeah, it makes a huge difference on hot days to be able to have these doors open with the fan on. So super stoked about that. We also have this OG uh, bug screen that Andrew built that's still rocking. And we just have like regular tires. There's nothing crazy at all. They're just like EcoPath, which I'm pretty sure is a Walmart brand, but this is from the previous owner. We did not put those on. A lot of people ask me if we have four wheel drive because I guess there's a lot of space here comparatively to most of the Econo lines you see on the road, but it's not. It's regular rear wheel drive and it does have an upgraded suspension. The owner before us put in another spring or something it basically has a 350 suspension um, so that he could carry more weight, but it has no, no lift or anything like that that I know of at least. Right here we have the exhaust for our diesel heater, which has been a, another huge game changer, but everything combusts underneath the van and gets exhaust out. Not much really going on with the back of the van. We got the spare tire underneath. Uh, we did install a backup camera though. That was one of the first things that we did and that does make a huge difference. Really the only time I have issues is reversing. If I didn't have a backup camera, it would be an issue, but it's no problem with the camera. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the exterior. Uh, I guess let's get to the inside. All right, so once we go in, it's not much really going on in the front here. We put our camera bags here and some of our window coverings in the front seat while we're parked. Coffee cups, sunglasses, 
storage box, a little seat. We also replaced this stereo to an aftermarket one that has a touch screen. And we do not have a sink. We just wanted to keep things sim simple with this blue water jug. It's a seven gallon water jug that just has a little spout. And we use that for all of our water needs. And so far we have had no problems finding places to fill it up. Any grocery store, even gas stations will sometimes have them. I guess the next thing would be the swivel seat. And this was one of the first things that we actually did in the build and it makes such a big difference. It really opens up everything in here. I can sit here and work on my computer while Andrew's laying in the back or whatever. He can sit here while he's cooking. Pretty standard, every van has them, but it definitely makes a big difference. And then in here, our little cabinet that Andrew built us um, is this, our, this is our battery, which is a 200 amp hour AGM Renogy deep cycle battery. I don't really know what's in there. There's a fuse panel and our little battery monitor, this on off switch. It's a very simple setup, to be honest with you. We don't even have an inverter or anything. This all powers our DC stuff. Um, and most of everything in our van is 12 volts. So now we don't have solar or anything like that. So the only way this battery system charges is when we drive, it charges with the alternator of the van. And we did install an isolator on the front so that it doesn't completely kill the starter battery for the van. And yeah, it's a very simple setup. We can go at least three or four days without having to drive and it charges very fast. When we do drive, we only have to drive 30 or 45 minutes and it's almost all the way charged. So yeah, we'll probably upgrade and get solar and maybe add a battery or two eventually. But for now, this system has worked pretty well for us. And for any AC power needs, like plugging in my laptop or anything that takes like a standard house plug, we have the EcoFlow River Pro, I think is what it's called. And it's a 750 amp hour battery, portable battery, and it's got USB-C, USB, regular USB, and then it's got your standard house plugs on the back. And the best part about this and why we went with this one is it charges to 100% in one hour when you plug it into a wall plug. So when we go to a coffee shop or anything like that, we can bring this in with us and plug it in and it's good to go in about an hour. We use this to boil water in the mornings and if we get low on it, we can just charge it when we drive as well if we're not going to a coffee shop, but it does charge a lot slower that way. But yeah, so that's been super useful and instead of having an inverter, this has been working great for us. So it's a simple setup, but maybe we'll change it in time. And here is our stove, which we have been just keeping on the counter for right now because it's not really in the way. It's just a classic two burner camping stove. I think we bought, paid like 30 or 40 bucks for this like six years ago, and it's been working like a champ ever since. It doesn't take up too much space. We don't really, we did definitely didn't want anything to permanently take up space on the counter because normally when we're driving or something like that, we'll just put the stove right there and get it out of the way. And then we have the whole countertop. And this is a butcher block countertop that I'm super stoked on. I didn't know if we were going to end up going with butcher block. We were just going to leave everything completely as just the regular plywood that it looked like. But it was all mismatched wood and I'm definitely glad that we went with this. I think we paid like 100 bucks at Home Depot for one big piece and we cut it into twos to make both of these here and we sanded it and stained it and yeah it came out awesome so far and we're able to move stuff around and it doesn't scratch up at all and i think it makes a huge difference and it matches the ceiling perfectly and i guess that's the next thing is the ceiling which we that was the one thing i did document on youtube is us doing the ceiling and it's just cedar tongue and groove and it was pretty simple we sanded and stained it and put it up in like a day and it looks great it matches with this and it's definitely your standard, like what everybody does in a camper, but I can't help but love it because it just feels like we have this little cabin on wheels now. And then we also have these puck lights, which we we couldn't decide how many we wanted to do. And we only installed four right down the center. Most people do, I think eight, four and four on each side. And we decided we didn't, we don't ever really need it to be super bright in here. So the four has been working great so far. They're very cheap. They don't take a lot of power at all. We pretty much can leave them on all the time and they barely draw any power. I think these are the warm white ones. They have like a cool white or warm white. And I think these ones are the warm white ones. All right. And then we have the upper cabinets, which this one we use for basically kitchen storage. And we have like dry food, chips, snacks, pasta shells, coffee filters, coffee stuff. Yeah. And Andrew built this, these himself and he even put these fancy little, they're kind of like shaker faces on the front. Uh, we didn't have this, it didn't look like this when we went on our trip, it was just regular plywood. We also have more dry storage in this cabinet down here 
which has just like canned goods, water kettle for boiling water, crackers, and then we have a bunch of shoe storage and like blankets and stuff down at the bottom there. Um, and then this little fancy box is another one of Andrew's creations to hide our toilet. It's essentially just a bucket toilet. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it is something that I get asked all the time. So for those of you that don't know what a bucket toilet system is, is it's just a regular bucket where you can use a garbage bag or they make like toilet bags and wood pellets. So we use the tractor supply wood pellets that they use for like horse bedding and stuff and they work incredible. It's so much better than kitty litter or anything else that we've ever used. It has absolutely no smell. It's so easy to get rid of. When liquid touches it, it basically turns into sawdust and it has been complete game changer being able to have a toilet wherever we go. When we're out in nature like this, it's easy to go outside but sometimes when we're on the side of the highway and we can't find a bathroom or when we're just at a Walmart and they close at midnight and we need to go, this thing has worked great. And the only reason I go into detail about that so much is the bathroom thing in the middle of the night was a big issue for me and something that stopped me from being on the road full time for a long time. So now that we've got that all figured out, it has been such a game changer. So I just wanted to share that. And then in here we have our fridge set up which is just <laughs> we also have our shampoo stored right there so don't mind that but this is a bouge rv um 30 quart fridge it doesn't it's not a freezer it's just a fridge and <laughs> we, have, we have corn on the cob in here oh my gosh you can smell that garlic and yeah it's so much better than having an actual cooler this thing has been great we've been using it for over a year now and every single day on the trip it we never had any problems knock on wood and it's pretty quiet and it doesn't draw that much power either so it's been a huge upgrade though since using a cooler and not having like wet vegetables and stuff um that has been a huge game changer and andrew also made this fancy little slide out thing so it's very easy to access and yeah i'm trying to think of what else i can show you guys in here this bed platform is the bed platform that we actually used in the rav4 so my grandpa helped us build that back in 2020 during the pandemic we basically just modified it a little bit and added a little bit on this side to make it fit for in here so yeah we could have built a completely new bed platform in here but we just wanted to keep things as simple as possible and as you can see we chose to go lengthwise with the bed, so we lay this way. And we have lots of room going this way, and the reason we did it that way is I, I just wanna be comfortable. I don't wanna be squished up like I am in a tent, and we thought about what we wanted to kind of like prioritize, and I wanted to make sure that I had a place that I could sleep comfortably every single night, and yeah, so no regrets so far with it. We love it. But I do see most people doing it side to side, and that does give you more room. But we just chose to do it that way because we wanted to prioritize being comfortable when we sleep. Underneath here, we also have a drawer, which is not made to be open from there. But um, this is a lot more kitchen storage, spices, pots and pans. It's actually very deep. But this is the same drawer that we built with my grandpa. And like I said, the same setup from the RAV4. So that has worked great. We have our light switch here which is for those lights and then we also have an extra little fancy light that we have right there um, this is the remote for our fan and this is our diesel heater screen which we don't have it the fuse in because it's summer so we uh, haven't been using it all right and then under here we have the diesel heater kind of hidden <laughs> we're using it for storage right now so we got some raincoats there and don't worry it's not plugged in we pulled the fuse but this is the actual heater and this is where everything happens and it combusts and goes underneath the van and gets exhaust out right here where i showed you guys earlier and then this is where all of the hot air goes and it comes out right here and the hot air comes out and rises up here and it has been a total game changer we used it many times on our trip because we started in the beginning of winter and it was incredible it's so nice to be able to have just a warm space whenever you want and diesel is pretty cheap doesn't smell we went with the Chinese diesel heater, which I was a little bit nervous about, but the Wabasto and I forget the other name brands, I heard they have the exact same problems as these and they're pretty much the same parts. So we went with the cheap $80 one from Amazon and so far we have no regrets. I absolutely love the diesel heater. And I just realized that these window coverings have been up the whole time, but they're just blackout curtains that we Velcro up and they're very easy to take on and off and they do a great job blocking out the sun. 
One thing that we didn't do is we didn't go all the way and completely finish this part. I wish that we would have done it with like wood paneling or something like we did with the ceiling, but trying to do that around the windows would have been a pain in the butt and we were just trying to get on the road as fast as possible. And we did install a couple uh, USB-C's so we can have power for our phones. I have one here and then we also have two 12 volt ones there and, uh, and yeah. Honestly, I can't really think of that much more. I think we've pretty much covered everything. I mean, the fan, this is the Max Air 3500 fan, I think. It's the one that has the remote and it has 10 different speeds and we absolutely love it. It blows air in and out. I would say that if we were to do it again, I would definitely put it right above where we sleep and then we would put another one in the front so we could have like dual venting. But yeah, this thing works great and I don't know how people live in vans without them. We also have these curtains that separate the front from the back and it's just regular blackout curtains from Walmart and we have this random just like wood piece that somehow fit perfectly with these little hooks and when we put it with the swivel seat, it's not perfect, but normally the seat swiveled the other way and it can completely block off the cabin from the rest of it. And with this and all of our window coverings up, it's completely dark in here. We can have all these lights on and nobody can even tell that we're in here. So this has been awesome. And it also helps keeping the heat in the front and not letting it get into the back. But very simple and super stoked on how that came out. And this same system with this wood dowel or whatever you call it and these hooks are how we have all of our um, curtains hung up throughout the van. So super simple and works great. And probably the last thing that I almost forgot to talk about is this floor. And it's just regular laminate flooring from Home Depot. We had it at our house because we used to use it for photo backdrops when we did like product photography and stuff. And we just set it on top of the pre-existing floor here. So we didn't insulate it or fasten it down at all. It's just kind of floating. And then we put the cabinets and everything like on top of it. So that's something that we kind of rushed and didn't do properly but it works great and yeah i mean eventually maybe we'll redo it and insulate the floor but for now it's been working perfectly all right one more thing i almost forgot to show you guys is the garage portion of the van which we don't use too often because there's not that much storage underneath but this is it we chose to have the bed platform lower versus higher so that we could prioritize more headroom versus storing more stuff underneath while we do store stuff under here we don't need that much and i'd much prefer to have headroom so right now we have like a bin that just has a bunch of random camping gear and we have our roller blades and like some outdoor gear stored under there these are some extra wood pellets for the toilet we got tripods we got andrew's roller blades under there fishing poles we got all kinds of stuff so yeah it's not a super big space to store stuff but it makes a big difference being able to just slide stuff under the bed and I'm very happy we chose to go with it lower versus higher and having more headroom. All right, and I think that's it. I can't really think of anything else that I haven't thought of. That's pretty much our setup. And this is what we've been living in full time for the past three months. We drove it all the way across the country and it did incredible. And I hope it just shows you guys that you don't have to have this super fancy expensive setup. You don't have to spend a year building your van. We've been using the van way more than we've been building it. We probably spent Andrew probably spent like two or three weeks really putting in a ton of work every single day nonstop before we left and this is what we have to show for it. So I know Andrew's not in this video but he doesn't love to be on camera so I don't like to force him. He's behind the camera right now actually filming but just know that I am so proud of you. I'm so happy and stoked that we have this gorgeous van that we get to travel in and I'm so excited that I finally got to share it with you guys. It's been a long time in the making. I'm happy that we were able to make some small upgrades that made a big difference and yeah. Hopefully the next few videos you guys see will be from our trip out west because I have so much footage to go through. But I just wanted to get this tour video out first because I didn't want you guys to see the video of us out west and be like, what the heck, the van's done out of nowhere? So I wanted to give you guys a tour so you can see what the setup's like. And right now we're in Michigan, we're in the Manistee National Forest and we're gonna be up here for a couple of weeks doing a few jobs and slowly make our way back to Detroit. And then we might be going back out west one more time this year, but I'm not exactly sure. So you'll have to stay tuned to find out. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate your support, even though it's been like five or six months. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you guys for watching again, as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.